The New Urban Question is uh, a riff, an engagement, initially with the Old Urban Question, and the Old Urban Question was a, a book that Manuel Castells wrote in the 1970s, a very, a, a very influential book, a book that influenced me enormously when I was a student, a great book, a brilliant book, uh, a book which posed uh, some, some dilemmas for politics, a book which is somehow uh, archaic now, I think, in, in, in some shape or form, a book which is wrong uh, in, in many ways too. Castells spoke about the urban question being defined by the way in which the urban realm is a spatial unit of what he called collective consumption. And collective consumption for Castells was all the goods and services that were, pro were produced, managed, uh, distributed by the state, um, the welfare state. Goods such as uh, public health, public uh, education, public housing, particularly public housing. And these, Castells argued, were absolutely crucial for the perpetuation, for the survival, for the reproduction of, of capitalism as a political economic system in the sense that these were goods and services that were unprofitable. Uh, private capital wouldn't cough up uh, uh, by, its own, by its own accord, its own desire to, to invest in it. They were too costly, it would take too long to construct. Uh, therefore, the state came in to somehow lubricate the wheels of motion of an emergent post-war capitalism. That was a crucial aspect. And the question of the urban, therefore, was when the state started to divest from its collective consumption budgets, what emerged were a whole series of, of contestations defending the state, defending the, the public sector, defending public housing, uh, trying to cling on to these goods and services. Uh, and he uh, christened or, or labeled these, these, these new political actors, participants, urban social movements. Urban social movements became interventions in the state intervention in the capitalism, if you like. The way in which the state was intervening, disinvesting, urban social movements were very special participants, very special urban actors in the sense that this was not based in the factory, these were not factory struggles, these were struggles that were taking place in the neighbourhoods, in the streets, in the housing estates, around issues that were cross-class, there were middle-class protagonists, there were people who weren't seen as traditional working class, they were outside the remit of the unions, often outside the remit of, of political parties, the Socialist Party in France, the Communist Party in France, and they were relatively autonomous political actors on the arena, in the arena of the urban. Now in the 1980s, of course, uh, we were uh, faced then uh, with a situation whereby Margaret Thatcher, Ronald Reagan, the United States, started to dismantle this whole uh, status system started to privatize it, started to deregulate, started to financialize things, started essentially to, to get rid of these uh, units of collective consumption that were seen so vital for the survival of capitalism. How could that be? How could Thatcher, Reagan dismantle things that were so vital for capitalism? Good question. One of the questions that needs to be asked, how has it gotten away with it? Uh, one of the ways in which it's gotten away with it, that it's invented a new form of, of capitalism. We heard in the 1980s the mantra of being entrepreneurial. Entrepreneurial uh, wasn't really the case in, under Margaret Thatcher. Uh, arguably, one could say that Margaret Thatcher created lazy entrepreneurs in the UK because it brutalized the working class, it destroyed the miners, it, it, it took a hatchet to the, to the labor movement. Uh, to the degree that entrepreneurs didn't have to innovate because they had everything given to them on a, on a Tory silver platter of, in, in, that, in that decade. In the 1990s, we started to see a very different form of, of, of capitalism, not so much entrepreneurial as parasitic, living off land rents, living off financial assets. The corporate sector was uh, seeing its profits uh, nosedive at the same time as uh, corporate uh, dividends and shareholder, shareholder stakes were, were rising. So economics were defying the law of gravity. Profits going down, shareholder bonuses going up. Where does that come from? Well, one could say that it's being gouged from ordinary people, being gouged, dispossessed. The private, the, the private sector has, has cashed in on the, the whole public realm. Uh, land has been uh, commodified. Rents have been extorted, monopoly rents have been extorted. Uh, all this has been going on to form a kind of parasitic capitalism. And for me, the new urban question is theorizing the way in which a parasitic capitalism is urbanizing, 
theorizing the way in which a parasitic capitalism is accumulating capital rather rather mysteriously in some shape or form and I think more above all else is to conceive uh, a politics an urban based politics that tries to think again about reinventing the whole notion of the public realm it thinks again about repossessing about uh, repossessing what's being dispossessed a politics which is very different from an urban social movement as Manuel Castells conceived it a movement which is a, a globalized political movement that engages not so much with the state but with finance capital it tries to think again about what the public realm constitutes today 21st century no going back only going forward a new form of, of public life, a new form of commons that can somehow think in, in, in a way that cities become generative again rather than parasitic.